Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, the first one in a while but we have a lot to talk about today with the potential for some very stormy weather across the UK and Ireland through from now into the weekend, including the risk of very heavy rain, very strong winds and even the small chance of uh, a couple tornadoes and we'll get into all the details of that now in this video. I thought I'd start off though by giving a explanation for the general pattern we're seeing now, why it's going to be so stormy and to do this we can look at the jet stream uh, moving across the North Atlantic and I'm showing you here the wind at 300 hectopascals that is a measure of pressure and essentially is saying what is the wind speed at the level of the atmosphere where the pressure equals 300 hectopascals. That's quite low. At the surface, we're looking at 1,000. So generally, in terms of height, this is around 9,000 meters, nine kilometers or so above the ground. So this is very high up. You won't be seeing these winds at the surface, but the jet stream is the most important driver in the UK weather. And so to understand what it's doing is very helpful. And you can see right away, we have this big ribbon of yellow and even turning to gray across the central Atlantic. And that's showing a very high intensity, essentially supercharged jet stream. In fact, we're looking at winds of over 200 miles an hour, even well over 200 miles an hour across the central Atlantic, which is more than enough to bring the risk of at least one uh, intense storm, which is what we're likely to see um, during this week and into the weekend. And the reason for this jet stream being so strong is because we've had some very cold Arctic air across the northern half of the US and Canada. And that's essentially created a very strong thermal gradient. Thermal gradients lead to strong jet streams and essentially it's adding energy into the jet stream kind of in, an injection if you like and then that essentially transfers the momentum into the Atlantic and then forward into the UK eventually over the long run as you can see exactly happening there. Anyway the first storm that we're going to be looking at is going to arrive tomorrow during the day especially during the afternoon and that's associated with this band of the jet stream pushing through here. Winds well over 200 miles an hour. And you can kind of see uh, very strong winds across all of the UK at the upper levels. Now that's going to lead to a surface pressure, a surface low pressure system, sorry, moving through during the day. And the cold front is likely to be quite strong and bring the risk of severe weather. But also there is the risk overnight of some very strong winds. As you can see uh, on the Met Office website, I'll put the link in the description so you can check the warnings for your local area. But you can see here we've got a yellow warning of wind out tonight and then a yellow warning of wind across parts of central, eastern England, north Wales, northern Ireland and southwest Scotland, northwest England too, uh, during the day tomorrow. So we'll take a quick look at the wind gust chart just to give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, let's use the French model. Uh, and you can see here, this is showing the risk of strong winds across the far north of Scotland tonight. So this is actually already happening. It's 8 o'clock now. So from around 7 o'clock till midnight, we've, we've been seeing these strong winds and they're going to continue potentially causing some disruption. But nothing too extreme, especially for this area. They're used to this kind of wind, 50, 60 miles an hour, nothing extreme. But then the more interesting system, and it may initially not seem that significant, but it could be quite significant especially locally comes on Thursday and that's like I said with a small low pressure disturbance uh, it kind of comes out of nowhere almost in a way during the day on Thursday but the main feature of this will be the cold front and that's because the very strong winds just above the ground and all the way to the jet stream are giving a lot of energy to that cold front making it very dynamic and bringing the risk of locally strong winds torrential rain and even a couple tornadoes and i'll talk about that now and the main time frame time frame sorry for that will be across parts of ireland and northern ireland during kind of midday and then transferring eastwards into the afternoon and early evening likely to exit by around nine o'clock as you see there and de deepening fairly quickly as well but in terms of that cold front the reason we've got it's got so much energy is because all the, the jet stream is involved, it's pushing a lot of kind of wind and just a lot of energy into the system and that transfers downwards and we get a response uh, in the winds just above the ground. That's what we call the low level jet. This is generally located around 850 millibars, that same pressure measurement pressure measurement as a height measurement that I was talking about earlier. This is generally around 1.5 kilometers above the ground and this is showing our disturbance just kind of in the lower to mid levels of the atmosphere. The low pressure center located somewhere between those two areas there. And we've got a um, <clears throat> uh, a cold front, like I said, located from parts of northern England down into southern England. And notice how the winds are very strong, widely uh, around 60 miles an hour, even slightly more uh, where it's red to yellow. And the most interesting bit, in my opinion, is this slight enhancement out here. And typically, 
when we get these rapidly developing low pressure systems, you get something called warm air advection just ahead of that cold front. Um, and what that essentially does is it increases the low level winds quite significantly. And if we take a look, oh, sorry, if we take a look at a sounding, which essentially is a 3D slice of the atmosphere, you can see something quite interesting on the what we call the honograph. Now, don't be alarmed if you don't understand this right away. It's fairly kind of confusing if you don't know what it is. Essentially, it's plotting the wind vectors uh, on polar coordinates at different points of different heights of the atmosphere. So at zero, the little zero is kilometers above the ground. Zero is the surface, and you can see we're looking at a wind like that southwesterly around 25 knots. If you want to find the wind at one kilometer, you do that, and you can see very, very strong, a lot stronger than there, around 50 to 60 knots. Uh, again, moving to the northeast, northeast from the southwest, and that is essentially showing the wind shear. So the difference between these two here, you can then draw a vector between those two vectors, and that's the difference, that's the wind shear. And essentially, if you look at the difference in height over the lowest three kilometers, there's a very big difference. And that just means there's a lot of wind shear, which you can verify by looking at these composite indices here. Between the first kilometer, 40 knots of shear, 400 meters squared to second squared of storm relative helicity, which I'm not going to explain now, but it's a similar thing to low level shear. And what this means is that, number one, the very strong winds at the surface through this small amount of instability and the convection that we're going to get along that cold front, uh, that's going to potentially transfer down to the surface. So these 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour winds at one and a half kilometers at the surface for most places tomorrow, it's going to be kind of 30, 40, but this could bring those 60 mile an hour winds down in the storms to the surface. I'll show you that in a second. Also, it brings the risk of rotation. And with rotation, we have the small chance of a couple of tornadoes across this sort of region here during tomorrow and i'm going to show you now the ukv model this bear in mind is the simulated reflectivity or radar sorry this is not necessarily going to happen but it shows a fairly likely scenario uh, in terms of the general evolution and you can see here's our uh, cold front very dynamic uh, quite intense and a lot going on and notice the small areas of enhanced color where the rain rate is highest that is what we call line segments or line convection. And what essentially happens, actually, let me go on this chart instead, is you have convergence uh, along the cold front at the surface. I don't know if it's showing up super well here. Here it's, it's showing well. So you've got a westerly wind here just behind the cold front, winds more southerly ahead of the cold front, and that creates a zone of convergence. And between the wind shift, it also leads to vorticity, which is essentially spin, and that can give the foundation for rotation and the risk of tornadoes. But um, in terms of the kind of aerial risk, you can see during the afternoon, there's our cold front band pushing through. And where we've got those line segments, that is where the risk of strong winds, potentially 60 miles an hour or more, and even a couple brief weak tornadoes is highest. Additionally, the risk of some very heavy rain. All of this will likely be over in an hour to two hours. But by the, by the time that's fallen, we could have seen 20, even 30 millimeters in places. Now, I do want to stress saying tornadoes is quite a big thing to say. Um, and if you're looking at this map and saying, oh my gosh, my house is right where the line segment is, there's going to be a tornado. No, that's not the case. Do not worry. The risk of any one location in the UK seeing a tornado is so, so small, uh, even on a day like this where the chances are enhanced, you maybe we'll see maybe five tornadoes maximum. I mean, it's hard to say. It's not kind of solid science, at least with this type of setup in the UK yet. But even if you have... Uh, five tornadoes, uh, their tracks will be very short. They'll maybe be cover like a speck of land like that. And if you live in all this area, your individual chance is very low. So don't don't worry. It's just something to be aware of, something you might see in the news on Friday. And also, like I said, there's a chance it might not happen. It's just a risk. But essentially, we're going to be seeing this band of strong winds and torrential rain push through the central and northern half of the UK and Ireland, starting around midnight across, sorry, midday across Ireland and Northern Ireland and then transferring further east and I think based on the uh, upper level wind charts the general synoptic how these things have played out in the past I'm expecting a local maximum in the severe weather threat across North Wales the Midlands perhaps into eastern England and across Northern England where we could be seeing the risk of 60 miles an hour maybe more and a couple tornadoes um, possibly the Aro model shows that quite nicely. Uh, it shows the development of a line convection. And these sort of, 
we've seen these sort of things on the models before, this kind of uh, storm morphology where you get this big kind of band and then at the end it just kind of tapers off and that's where the strongest of winds can be. And like I said, this is just one simulation so don't take it literally, but this is the kind of thing that might develop, i.e. general 40 mile hour wind gusts across England and Wales, but in a couple of pockets at the end of the convection you're getting 60 mile an hour gusts. Uh, don't take these locations literally. That's just something that's going to happen. We can't really pin down where. So that's the threat for Thursday tomorrow. So quite a lot to talk about there. Um, please do ask any questions in the comments because I can't really cover everything about that just in uh, one video. It's, there's quite a lot to say. Um, so moving on from that, Friday we're looking like a nice break in the weather. You can see likely to be rain free and we've got a ridge of pressure here developing. So that's probably going to mean... Uh, fairly settled as well, low winds and generally low rain away from the northwest. That's just for Friday though, unfortunately, because if we take a look at our map, once again, the jet stream map, you can see uh, from Friday into, so, if during, so actually during the day on Friday, we're watching this low pressure system develop. It starts out as a small wave over here. That's what it is right now. Actually, let's see if we can see it on the satellite. I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Uh... Sorry, this pen thing doesn't seem to be working very well. Okay, it might not be working at all, to be honest. Okay, I'm just going to refresh the page and hope that works. So if we take a look at the satellite right now, there, oh, that's a really good example. You can see this is exactly our low pressure system to watch for uh, Friday. This is the one for tomorrow. This is the one that's bringing strong winds across the north now. But what we've got here is a really, really classic frontal wave. You're going to have a warm front somewhere like that. That's leading to this cloud shield with a cold front here. And then you've got the really classic low pressure developing look, as you can see here. This is what we call a baroclinic leaf shape. Uh, baroclinic just means temperature uh, gradient, temperature contrast. And that leaf shape is probably to do with the satellite imagery vaguely looking like a leaf. Uh, I don't think so too much, but... Uh, there you go. So that's a really classic look. And this is showing this frontal wave is already developing just by the looks of things pretty classically um, as well. But if we take a look back at that jet stream and then we push it through uh, during the day on uh, tomorrow and then into Friday, you can see it's right in what we call the uh, right entrance region of the jet stream. So we've got this jet streak here. That's the fancy name for just an enhanced zone of wind in the jet stream and you can essentially split it up into quarters this is the uh this is the left exit um this is the right exit this is the right entrance and this is the left entrance and for storms to rapidly deepen and for the pressure to drop we want the left exit sorry the yeah left exit or the right entrance and that's because uh due to the the way the wind works essentially it speeds up out of here uh, and general and also kind of spreads out here we get convergence developing in these two rough zones and convergence at the up sorry divergence divergence at these two rough zones and divergence at the upper levels the air is spreading apart and so what does the air beneath it do it fills the gap and then what do you have here the pressure drops and so you get a deep low like that and if you track this through over the day during the day sorry thursday into friday you can see it's maintaining its position in that right entrance region and also it actually starts to do something interesting where essentially it places itself both in the left exit because this is the left exit here and also the right entrance so that region there so it's really going to be taking advantage of all the upper level rising motion and the pressure is going to fall rapidly as it tracks uh, to the northeast during Thursday and into Friday and you can see that happening there drops to 992 then below 990 then to into the 970s and then it eventually bottoms out roughly in that zone now the thing to note is that this you get all the energy in the jet stream it essentially breaks like a wave like a wave on the ocean does it has too much energy it topples over and so we get the low pressure system is kind of left in this zone of not really being the jet stream and that's by Saturday uh, probably a little later than what this model is showing here but what that means is that this system is going to be moving really really quickly really quickly and then it's going to start to start to slow down by the time it gets to eastern england so potentially we could be looking at quite an interesting evolution here also one thing to note is we are going to get this uh, storm occluding by the time it makes landfall essentially so you can see here there's our low it rapidly deepens all those warm fronts that's beginning to get that classic loop it started to occlude there's the warm front and then it essentially reaches its peak maturity just over the uk during the early hours of saturday 
and you can see that right here. So anywhere associated with this occlusion is likely to be seeing quite strong winds, uh, also where the pressure gradient is quite tight. Um, but if we look at some of the models, just to give you a rough idea of what's going on right now, because there is still quite a lot of disagreement. We do know, though, it will be wet and windy some places. We just can't say exactly where. Uh, this is the GFS. Shows a storm making landfall across parts of Ireland on Friday evening. So actually, I take back what I was saying earlier about Friday. It is going to rain on Friday across the west and then be increasingly windy. And then overnight, that rain basically spreads into all of the UK and Ireland. Potentially some heavy snow across uh, the north as well. That will have to kind of come down to maybe tomorrow to look at but yeah potentially northern scotland on the gfs at least uh looking at blizzard conditions with significant snowfall i'll do more a lot of really detailed update on this storm um tomorrow so don't worry if you're kind of feeling a bit lost and all that but i'll, I'll do more details later but this is just giving you an overview of the different scenarios uh, but this essentially brings uh our occlusion, very strong winds on the southern and western side of the occlusion, uh, all the way from Ireland into Wales to the southwest and then into parts of southern England there, 60 miles an hour winds for this kind of zone. So this region here, that's one potential scenario. Like I said, the low slows down and so the, the winds don't even make it to the far east, but that that's just one of many scenarios. The UKV shows something fairly similar, except uh, worse essentially and that is a very 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 powerful storm here developing especially through the Irish Sea We're looking at winds of well over 100 miles an hour not well over but approaching well over 100 miles an hour pushing into Wales the Welsh coast all of Ireland and Northern Ireland under very strong winds there and then that does eventually transfer east into a very windy day during the day on Saturday for much of England so uh, we do know we're going to have very strong winds and heavy rain somewhere and we also do know it's going to like uh, likely last most of Saturday, uh, but there are other potential scenarios too, so we can't really be too focused on the area. For example, the icon shows the deepening to be slightly less advanced by the time it crosses Ireland, makes landfall there. Still, very strong winds uh, on that occlusion, uh, but then the storm kind of re-strengthens once again and pushes 100 mile, hour, 100 mile an hour winds into the east coast. So the same region seeing very a little wind on the GFS and UKV are showing very very strong wind on the icon. Another different scenario we've got is the Arp Edge and that's a slightly more southerly track but then essentially same thing with the occlusion brings winds even in land well over 70 miles an hour even impacting populated areas such as London, uh, the southeast, the Midlands, Kent there. So really I can't say to you guys now exactly where and when is going to see the strongest winds because to be honest we just don't know and there's a very high chance uh, that that will change if I say you know whatever whatever it's showing now. What we do know is the timing uh, Friday evening into generally the day on Saturday that kind of region there further east will be Saturday further west will be Friday. We also do know heavy rain likely across Ireland central and southern England perhaps into parts of uh, Northern England, Scotland, depending on the track. For example, the Met Office has all of uh, all of uh, England and parts of, uh, no, not, not quite Scotland there, but has all of England and Wales under that warning. So showing the uncertainty. Uh, and then the other thing we know is somewhere we'll see strong winds, likely on the southern or western side of that occlusion. So depending on where that goes, that could really be anywhere from Ireland, uh, northern England, southern England, southwest England, northeast England. So a lot of places. Also, potentially we're looking at sig significant snowfall on the northern flank. That's likely to be high ground of northern England. The most extreme scenario would be uh, parts of Scotland, uh, which is what the GFS was showing. But as you can see, a lot of uncertainty, but quite high impact potentially across all of the UK and Ireland during uh, Friday and then especially into Saturday and this is likely in my opinion at least to become a named storm. Anyway so that's about it um, after that things luckily become a bit more settled not fully though because we've got high pressure across the west the east though will be feeling very cold rain showers and um, a strong breeze. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, and like I said, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day. Bye-bye.